I am sure. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Hi, Pardeep. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you all doing? Yes, pretty good. Winter started at uh, at your uh, uh, in your neighborhood. <laughs> yes, the winter is in full effect. Okay. Full gear. Okay, good. Um, thank you for taking our time, and uh, I'm really happy that you are available today. Oh, no problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, give me a brief uh, about yourself, and what do you do? So I'm a therapist in town. I do uh, trauma-based uh, therapy and uh, engage, you know, both individuals and communities in uh, healing, the healing process. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> for the past five and a half years, I've been running an organization called Serve to Unite, and I've ran that organization with uh, a friend of mine uh, named Arnold Michaelis. He, his background is he was a uh, former white supremacist. Um, and he started one of the uh, most violent white supremacist organ- uh, gangs in uh, the United States, which has now become worldwide. And uh, my father, for me personally, the journey comes uh, in combination with Arnold because in August 5th, 2012, my father and five others were murdered by the same, uh, by a member of that same gang that Arnold helped to start. Mm. So me and him go and travel, and and we um, we talk about the reconciliation process, the transformation process, and one of the cities that we you know we go, we got to meet you was um, uh, Groton, Massachusetts, and yes. it, it was an honor to be able to come to you know the town and be able to address some of the tension yes. uh, that exists. Thank you. Yeah, we met actually uh, a year or more at Harvard, also where you were presenting. You were part of the ah, panel, yes. and that's where we met, and that's where we started thinking about how to have you and Arnold uh, over. Uh, make sure that uh, people understand that, yes, Arnold has left that gang and his um, organization, right? Yes, yes. Obviously, yes, yes, that's yes. why he's going around with you and talking about how exactly, to... Exactly, exactly. He, he has left that organization. He's been out for a while, and he's been doing... Um, peace activism for mm-hmm. about 10 years now. Oh, okay. Um, so so, yeah, so we that met organization that. is still there? Which organization? The, the one he started? Yeah, it's actually... Uh, so the, the organization that he helped to start um, it has become one of the, the most violent white supremacist oh, wow. organizations worldwide. Mm. Well, anyways, thank you so much for uh, giving us that. So um, I assume mm-hmm. you have children? I do. Okay. I guess I'm blessed to have four children, and wow. I am married. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, part of part of what I do is because I think as as mothers and fathers, we take this oath that uh, we shall work for a better um, a, a, a better land or better place than we have in, inherited ourselves. Mm-hmm. And part of the part of the work that I do is informed by not only what happened to my father, but me being a father. Oh, okay. So you want a better place as much as you can for your children. Yeah, I basically. think I think that's what all parents should yes, strive for. Definitely. So do you, uh, I mean, do, do your children know about any of this, what happened in August uh, uh, in 2012? Yeah, they did. Uh, my two oldest, um, they were with me when that happened. Mm-hmm. We were just, we were outside the Gurdwara at the time. Mm-hmm. We were just outside the Gurdwara when that happened, so... Um, Luckily, we uh, um, were delayed at the house, and we missed the shooting by about ten minutes. Oh wow! And uh, so, so therefore, we were fortunate that uh, you know my, my my children feel fortunate as well that um, nothing happened to them and nothing happened to dad, but they knew that something happened to grandpa. My mm-hmm. mom was inside, my mom was inside the good war as well. So yeah. uh, you know we <clears throat> well, we were fortunate, but with that. Um, feeling fortunate there also comes a sense of uh, what we call survivor's guilt 
mm. um, you know, because you're wrestling with survivor's guilt mm -hmm. and survivor's relief. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's why we do what we do. Must be tough for your mother, too. Very difficult to reconcile all that, what must be happening. Anyways, I really appreciate yeah. you talking about it. Yeah. And I guess you have become an example and you are going around and that's why we had you in Groton. Uh, and uh, to um, educate people, basically, about uh, humanity. I mean, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. So that's what matters. doesn't matter which okay. temple or faith you belong to. So um, yeah. how, how do you, um, like, I don't know if your children give you feedback about your being a father, your being a parent or your wife or people around you. <laughs> what type of father do you think you are? I think I think um, you know for anything, um, just what we try to be better than the day before. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I'm a father, and and as far as like a community person, and you know you play a lot of different roles for a lot of different people. Mm. Um, I'm obviously a therapist to some people, um, so I think out of all the titles that I carry, um, father is the most important. Mm. So they should, they should know that. Um, uh, hopefully, the children know that. Obviously, you know, children when they're young, they want they they need they need time and they need nurturing. So I try to be there as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I do I also realize that I have a responsibility mm -hmm. um, for um, you know for a community, and, and so, so I have to we, also be there. So, do you uh, do, does your therapist come uh, out often when you're? talking to your children is it like a fine line how do you manage or balance not being too in mm -hmm. you know like giving instructions all the time or being you know yourself and letting go or be relaxed with your children uh do you yeah. do you have any of those moments yeah um you know you i think for for me the therapist was always in me mm -hmm. i think the part of me was like i was i was I always been a person that tried to help other people mm. and that's where I found um who I was you know just to be genuine and just to listen um under, understand more than we judge um this society as far as like american western society is a very judgmental society mm. um and we have to understand that that's in our dna from mm. a very long you know we have judged people to be inferior mm. we have judged some to be superior mm. we've judged people to be bad good all these like things that we attach to things so i'm very careful that with my kids that i don't also um create this judgmental stance because of the place that i exist the the therapy that we do is trauma-informed which means that like Instead of thinking what is wrong with a person, mm -hmm. we ask we ask that person what happened to you. So okay. there's a difference. There's a difference in uh, in that and saying we. I mean, although I call myself a therapist, I think just the hu the human element of understanding someone else's humanity is what we're trying to get back to. Mm. I think the world, uh, you know, the, the worldwide, the, the problem exists because of of ego and illusions. Mm. And, and and people, those illusions look different to different people, mm -hmm. and they've been they've been believing that their entire life, mm. and so these thoughts, you know, uh, decide our intentions. Our intentions uh, drive our actions. Mm. So for for my children, I think it's just it's important for me to say, okay, where is that thought coming from? Mm. Um, where is that intention coming from, and what causes that action? They're all relatively young. So, um, you know, I, I think more than more than my uh, therapist part informing who who I am as a parent, I think just my humanity drives what I am as a therapist. And, and that's it's as simple as that. Yeah, I would like uh, our listeners to know that you are uh, I will be talking more about your uh, work because you are kind mm -hmm. of not kind, but in fact, you are a mentor you are a father of four children, but then mm -hmm. in addition to that, you are uh, served to unite your organization, goes around and mentors and educates so many children. It's not only your four children, right? Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have a bigger role out there that you are playing and um, helping educate children and adults, as I understand. 
Yeah, actually, over the past two years, we have been working more with adults mm. than than children. So In I think that's area? where, um, you know, most of my work as a therapist is with with adult males and ending cycles of violence. Uh, um, so we 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 don't advertise it as much, it's, but it's yeah, we've been we've been working with adults much more than we have been with with children, um, especially over the past six, uh, one year after the Trump. Uh, um, election. Mm. So, children uh, like adolescents or uh, or, or mm -hmm. like old. How, what is the age group? Sorry. It, it just kind of depends. We I mean we we talk in churches. We talk at uh, you know obviously like you you heard us talk at Harvard, so colleges. Mm -hmm. um, we we talk with men who are getting out of jail and um, or, you know trying to establish uh, a normalcy of life, mm -hmm. going back into general. Uh, it just kind of depends. So we have we have people who, you know, it's it's all over the age range. It's all over mm. the gen, like male, female. It's it's, it's all, you know black, white, mm. Latino, Middle Eastern, Indian, Pakistani. Wow. It doesn't like it crosses all boundaries okay. because I think, you know, when we think about Serve to Unite, Serve to Unite was meant to be not just an organization, but a mission. Mm. It's a it's it's really a mission to return back to what is real, what is truth. Mm. Um, and truth is, I mean, really, like I said, truth is that we are all just from the same source. We mm. yeah, we share the same divinity, mm. although we have found ways to separate ourselves. We're not separate. Okay. So, how did you it's, reach it's, this conclusion? Well, I mean, part of this conclusion is just it's 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 always it's it's kind of innate. Meaning that, like, I think it's in every person. They know this to be true. They know that they they don't come from a different source than some somebody else. Mm. But but when we establish and say, well, your God is Jesus, mm. you know, this person's God is Muhammad. This mm. person's God is this and that. Mm. Really, we're just we're we're lying to ourselves. Mm. Well, uh, just to correct you, uh, Muhammad is yeah. not God for us. No, for messenger. Muslims. Yeah, messenger. Yes, yeah. yeah. Just just to uh, make sure that. Yeah. That makes, but yes, you're right. I agree. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm, I assume that bullying comes a lot in your mm -hmm. work. Bullying comes, yeah. I mean, bu bullying the is issue definitely of bullying. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. De definitely, the bullying is one of the top issues that we have that uh, we address within like schools. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, th I think even even bigger than schools, we have a bully culture. We have a bully society. Mm. So how do you Meaning think that, we can help our uh, parents and children to, uh, what is the best way to tackle this issue, which is is supposed to be, it? I have uh, found out that it's quite prevalent and we do not talk much about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if it's a, like, it kind of depends on the situation situation, mm -hmm. uh, what is happening with the bully, or how old the bully is, mm -hmm. how old uh, the, the the victim is. But, I mean, uh, altogether, like a short answer would be to recognize the humanity within the bully and the person being bullied. Uh -huh. So it If, should be in schools and homes. Like, how do we go about it? Can you give us some skills or techniques to handle this? Yeah, the, the, have the parents get to know one, one another. Mm -hmm. um, get the parents involved. Get get um involved the teacher in school yeah in okay. school like too many parents are hands off and they don't know what's happening in the school mm. they don't know who their kids teachers are they don't know who their friends are so mm. the, 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 it can't just be that we're saying oh you, you know what the bullying is happening and we don't know why it's happening mm. it's happening because you're not keeping a close and not like parents need to take some, some ownership on some of this stuff mm. and say Well, what's happening on social media? What's happening on Instagram? What's happening on, on at the at the school itself? Mm. Why is it happening? Why is this person bullying? Any bully is doing it because mm. they're suffering. They're hurting themselves. Okay. So, what can you what can you do to help that bully? Why is the, why are they doing that at school? Mm. So basically, okay. again, addressing our personal issues at home and outside, and whether you're bullying or you are being bullied. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, education is is important. Education looks it doesn't just look like reading a history book. Mm. Education uh, is about understanding feelings. Mm. 
we're we're incredibly intelligent, but many of us are are not emotionally intelligent. Mm. Meaning that we don't know why why we have the feelings we have. Mm. And so, so getting to know that. Mm-hmm. So, like mm-hmm. learning about yourself is more important first. Basically, is that what you're saying? Learning about self is 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 the key, the most important thing, mm. because when you change yourself, the whole world changes. And what about listening to yourself also? I mean, it's very important to listen yeah, to others, yeah. but to listen. Oh, yeah. How do you yeah, do that? Yeah, no, listening to self. <laughs> I, I, th- I think you you should, you have to challenge yourself, right? Mm. You have to challenge what you've been told. You have to challenge everything, mm. and when you when you challenge you come back to it and say okay like what is really true mm. right the, me, the 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 only time that something most people challenge right is when they're sitting on their deathbed mm-hmm. and they're saying to themselves has every has everything that i believed been because i've been told it and it was just more convenient for me to believe it mm. and so i live my life that same way mm. or or has it been that you know what i just have been scared to challenge it before uh the worst part is if you if we if we feel like we exist apart from other people because uh, you know like when i said like, like you know and i know i know uh, jesus was messenger muhammad was messenger nanak was messenger um sadatra was a messenger right mm-hmm. but too many people don't understand that they understand them to be the manifestation of god mm-hmm. and they think that like if you have, if you have now we have christmas coming up mm-hmm. right if christians say oh yeah this is my god right this is my way to god mm. right already somebody's taking an ownership to god mm. and they're owning god and they're owning salvation right mm. and so there's there's a judgment component with that meaning that if you don't believe in my same way to god or route to god then you're actually not going to be getting to god mm. and that's caused more wars than any other uh thing ever in society mm. as far as like religious differences mm. now you have jews and palestinians fighting over land mm. as if as if god is a land lord mm. Do you think that right. is religious fight? I think I think religion has a big part to play in that. Mm. But I think I think religion organized religion can be beneficial and it can be very detrimental mm. depending on which edge of the sword we want to use. If we want to use religion to bring people together, then you will if you want to uh, create and like have religion to break people apart. So do you think we can will. blame the religion or we should uh, look for what it is the issue with people how they are interpreting or following? I think both can be done. Hmm. I think I think both can be done and say it's never going to be one or the other. It's hmm. going to say we have to look at religion, we have to look at poverty, we have to look at uh, class, we have to look at gender. Mm-hmm. we have to look at all the all the dynamics that give somebody power over another person you have to look at mm-hmm. because that's that's what it comes back to and 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 whenever we want to we 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 have this thing called justice yes right justice sometimes looks looks like just us <laughs> right that's a good one and, and 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 no matter who a person is they start to believe it's only just us Mm. and the other and then other people don't matter as much so even like when when the gudwara was attacked you know we we encouraged people from inside the gudwara to get out of the gudwara mm. right and some people did but some people were just more comfortable around other people who spoke the same language who you believed mean, the same sorry, way can you explain like what do you mean by you, getting out from gudwara like when we we do, when we talk about doing service or doing seva mm-hmm. typically we do service and seva mm-hmm. to those people that are the same religion as us or same culture as us mm-hmm. come from the same country as us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so part of the problem is not just segregation mm-hmm. part of the problem is 
self-segregation, mm. meaning that we separate ourselves. Mm. And we don't, we, we should come to the Gudwara and we should learn the ancient teachings. Or we should go to the, you know, to the mandir, or we should go to uh, the synagogue or the mosque or masjid or mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm. And, but, but at the same time, we shouldn't just stay there. We should go out and, and embrace that, like, you know, these people, the messengers that came were, were telling us to go out. So basically you're talking about what we, you and I do is interfaith or uh, learn about mm -hmm. other faiths and participate mm -hmm. in other traditions and welcome them and you go to that as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because the message is the same, really, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's the messages between different faiths and interfaiths mm -hmm. is the same. Mm -hmm. When we talk about when we talk about Christianity, we talk about original sin. Mm. Right? When we talk about another religion we'll say, Oh that uh, that's duk. Mm. Right? Some religion will say that's that's Maya. Mm. Right? Some religion will say that's like something else. Sin sin. But what we're talking about is humanity taking the journey from going from bad to getting to be good. Mm. Going from dark to being light. Mm. Meaning meaning that we need enlightenment. We need education. We can't simply be ignorant. But that takes that that takes a transformation. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's true. Thank you. Let me come to a few questions and let's see if we have more time. I think I'll have sure. to come back to you. I know that you have a book coming up next year. Uh, your mm -hmm. book, uh, can you tell me about that in a yeah, minute the, or so? Yeah, the book is called The Gift of Our Wounds. And it talks about me, my journey as an immigrant and Arnold's journey as a American and how Arnold got into the movement and how immigrants are trying to fit into America and are being told that they're not part of america mm. um so it, it talks about the east and west mm. sort of dichotomy mm -hmm. of worlds worlds coming together mm. and and what we need to do is we need to take uh these wounds that exist because of the coming together and understand that there's a gift with that too that everybody you know because they are different they are unique and these unique differences help to make a stronger society rather than a weaker one mm. yep Thank you. All right. Uh, can you tell me what are the things that money can buy in your life? Something money can buy? What, what are some buy. things can't buy? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think uh, money can't buy a lot of things. Um, I Name think it can't. Three. It can't. Uh, or, kindness. It can't. It can't buy. It can't buy happiness. Mm. It cannot buy um, uh, kindness. Mm -hmm. It cannot buy um, courage. Mm. Okay. How do you define uh, value of time? Um, I define it, I mean, I think, I believe that our human existence, mm -hmm. uh, that we exist on earth, mm -hmm. is limited. It's mm -hmm. limited. Mm -hmm. But that our spirit is uh, eternal, mm -hmm. meaning that there is, no, there is no end and there is no beginning. Mm -hmm. There was never an end nor a beginning. Mm -hmm. We are just of the universe. Mm -hmm. And... Um, our spirit will go back to the universe. Mm. And so, so I, I believe there is an, uh, the time only exists within the material mm. body. Mm. Thank you. Uh, what is the uh, value of gratitude in your life? Gratitude is everything. It's, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, if you don't have gratitude, mm -hmm. um, you, you'll live a miserable life. And if you have <laughs> gratitude, you, uh, you'll live a happy, fulfilled life. I mm. think, you know, um, Dr. Wayne Dyer talked about the power of intention. Mm. And when we live a life of gratitude, mm. we have captured the intention of our life. Mm. Um, because there's, there's, you know, life is to grow. That's, that's what it is. We don't speak in depth. We don't speak in uh, the things of, uh, of like lack or poverty. You know, when, when grass grows, it grows. Mm. When, when the Earth has grown, it's grown. It came from a small energy source. Mm -hmm. Even when we think about, like, when we were um, a sperm and, we, uh, uh, like, and uh, like had, you know, came together with an egg, we came together from that and we grew into a 200-pound person. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. so, 
so it's always about that's growth much how and you grat- weigh? gratitude. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. You told us your weight. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, you're young <laughs> and you <laughs> it's not too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's fine. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so what is the purpose of your life after all what you have done so far? And you're pretty young and you have a long way to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the purpose of my life is just to just to live a life of gratitude, I live a life of love. Oh. Um, what is, you know, what, how do you define love? What is love for you? For me, for me, lo- lo- love, for me love is God. Hmm. that's that's you know when we when we think about like the word love hmm. you, no matter where hmm. if you hear like if you see god and if you see love those two words are interchangeable hmm. so if you look at a poem um by, by anybody hmm. if you see love in the poem replace it with god and if you see god in the poem you can replace it with love hmm. so it's the intention it's the it's the it's what it's what what created us um, you know, no matter what we are, I think I think every act that every person or anything does is either an act of love or a cry for love. Mm. But love is the only answer. So thank you. Life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what? How would you? Uh, what would you do differently today if you knew that there was no tomorrow? Hmm. That's a good question. If I knew that there wasn't a tomorrow, um, I don't think anything. I think I, I am doing what I would do even if I knew there wasn't a tomorrow. I would spend, you know, I got today is Sunday. I get to spend time with the kids and mm. uh, wife, and and I've done enough in my lifetime that I feel very fulfilled. Mm. That once once it does come and that my life is at an end point, mm. I will I will I won't be I won't be in that bed saying. I should have, would have, or could have. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. What is a failure in your view? And a f- yeah, a failure. Yeah. Um, to me, I, I get frustrated when I see potential being wasted, um, and, and so that that's my biggest frustration. Potential it's, being it's wasted. Not the, that's what you said. Because uh, your yeah, voice potential. drops a little, so I'm going to repeat a few words that you say. Oh, sometimes. sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I, I so what I see as a failure is potential being wasted, mm. and I see people being unhappy. I see people looking in the mirror and they don't see the beauty that they have. Mm. Um, so they they don't act on the beauty that they have or the world. They're so busy just dealing with life that mm. they don't appreciate how how valuable it is. Mm. You know, if we talk about connections in in the in the human body. Mm. there's more connections in a human body than there is stars in the universe. Mm. And, and, you know, then you think about how somebody look, can look in the mirror and understand how they were created from this beautiful spirit and still look, look at themselves as if they were nothing. Mm. And that's, that's the most frustrating part mm. is that I think people have, people have started to believe that they're worthless. Um, and so they don't act upon the gifts that they were given. And why is that? Why does Luby go in that route? Do you have you found anything? Like, what is the reason? Like anybody who is accomplishing what you just said, another on yeah. the other side is a successful person in your view, right? Who, yeah, who but can... even with successful people, mm. they can be very unhappy because because what we deem as success in especially the Western world, mm. we judge and we say, okay, well that person is success because they got money. That person is a success because they have fame. Mm. We ha- that person is success because they got achievements and awards. Mm. None of that is actually really success mm. because all of those are attached to ego, and I think we're unhappy because we over we have become overly attached to ego and judgment. Mm. And so when we, th- when we have a, when we have a, a society where we have people who are like, Hey, you know what? If I believe in this, then I shall go to heaven. Mm. Um, or if I believe in this, I'll go to hell mm. when they don't realize that really heaven and hell is right here in existence. Mm. And, and you could just live it out. And, um, that's that's the truth. Is is that that that's the only tangible truth? Is that say every every spirit is going to go back to the universe? Mm. So I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of judgment in our society. There always has been, 
And I think that judgment is attached to worth because now, you know, for a very long time, we were in this society, white male landowners were telling um, blacks that they weren't worth as much. Uh, they were at, at one point, they told them that they were worth three fifths of a person wow. with a three fifths law. Mm. So with that said, I think a lot of our psychology now, we don't see the beauty in the person that in the next person because we don't see the beauty within ourselves. Mm, mm, thank you. So, um, anything you would like to change about yourself? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, I, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean that, I mean that to say, like, uh, you know, I... I you know, I, I would like, I think everything happens for a reason or we give it a reason. Mm -hmm. So I, obviously there's been bad days and good days. Just the other day, um, I was coming back from DC, that trip to DC mm -hmm. and I got, uh, there was a snowstorm, mm -hmm. that snowstorm, um, basically I had to sleep at the airport overnight mm -hmm. oh. and it was just only a two hour flight, mm -hmm. but I had to sleep. I had to, we had to dock over there. So it took us 17 hours wow. to get home. Um, even at that time, just to where my mind is right now, I'm like, man, there's there's a learning opportunity from this. Mm. There's there's something with this. So mm. I, I wouldn't change anything that's ever happened in my life. Okay. Now, that's not to say that I don't have regrets. Mm. I have I have regrets, but those regrets are also what made me too. Mm. Thank you for saying that. That is important. I believe in that too. That we. I don't believe that I should say, or I'd like to say, oh, I have no regrets because I don't know, then how will I learn? So, yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, what is to yeah. live a healthy, fulfilling life? I, I think you have said it, most of it, but um, let's go to this question, if you can inculcate that with living mindfully or mindlessly. What is living mindfully? Living Living mindfully is to live, I think, just to just to see things as new, so the nuance of things. Mm. Um, you know, each day we wake up, we have about an eight-hour break from life, mm. and we get to go into our subconscious mind, mm -hmm. and we get to sleep. Mm. And if if the next day we get the blessing of waking up, mm -hmm. then consider it a blessing. Uh -huh. um, I think that's to be mindful, mindful, to not take things for granted. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it's good. to see it's to see the it's to see the beauty uh of things um with the child like mind mm -hmm. all right uh, um, do you laugh often do you like to laugh or you're a serious person oh, I'll, I'll, no 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 i like to laugh all the time okay. you <laughs> I have laugh, a, a I humor the, you're humorous time. you like oh, yeah. how was the value of oh, humor yeah. The value of humor, oh, yeah. it's priceless. Okay, good. I, you know, I, I think I think, I think the, the the value of humor is one of those things that you can't uh, you can't put a price tag yeah. on either, and you can't have money by. It. Yeah, it's just you, you're having you know your life is to have a good time. I think good. Good. Um, you know, I used to I, I used to be scared of uh, airplanes uh -huh. and flying, uh -huh. and, and and eventually, um, I think you just start to laugh at uh -huh. what you're scared of uh -huh. what you feared because so what just, did you fear just uh, just you know things like that like flying mm -hmm. um i feared when i wasn't in control mm. so to break it down to say i fear when i'm not in control of something mm. and i think a lot of us a lot of the people that i work with fear not being in control mm -hmm. because of something that's happened to them where they felt out of control mm -hmm. and and then you really break it down and you say well when are you really in control Mm. what do you control <laughs> do you control do you control the air that comes out of your mouth mm. do you control could you control the oxygen that comes in and out of your lungs wow and when does that oxygen stop being yours and when does that oxygen become the universe and when does it become from the universe to you mm -hmm. and how do we share this oxygen and these molecules with things so it's just, like mm -hmm. if you start to question and think think things like that mm -hmm. you honestly have to laugh mm -hmm. because because if, if I took everything seriously that people believed all the time, mm -hmm. you, it would almost drive you crazy, right? Because <laughs> yeah. cause I think people, the biggest problem is that people do live in illusions. I think they, they really believe um, some of the opinions that they, that they have held or they hold and never to question them, never to say, what is that about? What, where did that come from? Mm. Thank right? you. Human Thank you. 
Yeah. That's yeah. We can continue to talk about it. There's this such a long, a deep um, topic. Uh, any message of hope you would like to give? Oh no! Just you know, the message of hope is that this the the world and humanity is is better than we think it is. Okay. I think I really do believe in the good of people. Okay. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of times we get so boiled into the thing like the, the what what's wrong in society. Mm. You know, our our Facebook posts and you know our social media feeds. Mm. There, everybody's always lamenting about this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And and the hope is, uh, you know, that that, that no, it, it's not. Mm. These are the the you know essentially every day is a is a good day is is a day that you wake up and you should appreciate and be mindful for what you have. Thank you. And it's Thank given you know it's given in abundance. Yep, yep. It's basically how you recognize it or identify it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So my last question. What lights you up? What lights me up? Um, you know, life itself. But well, I like my children. I think that's the that's for sometimes that's that's what we see is we see ourselves and continue generations after us. Mm. Um, therefore, you know, I think sometimes when when we talk about fear of death, mm. fear of death only comes when you don't think there's a continuation, when you mm. think that that's not going to be continued mm. when we see our children we light up because we know it's continuing and we know that we get to live through them and we live and we live and we live and generation after generation we pass on what is st- uh, stored in our dna mm. yeah. Pardeep, thank you so much as always thank you Shwa. thank you and i'm hoping to talk to you next year after your book comes out thank you so much thank you take care you too bye Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Shwa.